Welcome to the introduction to Ovid Databases and Searching with Glenn McAlpine from Ovid, and he's very happy to be here today to introduce you to the databases and some searching tips. Uh, he's going to talk a little bit briefly about the databases and then also provide some live demos, and I'm going to quickly show where you can access these databases on the websites, whether you're coming from St. Michael's or St. Joseph's or Providence Healthcare. So I'll hand it over to Glenn. All right, thank you. Michael, let me start to share my desktop here. And I'm going to begin this session with a few slides, and then we will spend most of the session in the live Ovid system doing some uh, demo searching. Okay. So uh, again, my name is Glenn McAlpine. I'm part of a training team. There's a whole team of us. Um, we are happy to, to join you at any time. Um, it, it'll be useful for you to have this recording, but uh, should there be a need for future sessions, uh, whether for uh, people new to Ovid or really, really advanced stuff, we're happy to do it, my teammates and I. So let me tell you about uh, what we're going to cover today. Uh, first, we will be making sure everyone knows how to get to Ovid via your own uh, library website. At that, at, when we get here, I'll hand it back to Michael. Uh, then I'm going to go over a few slides discussing the uh, different databases, the different resources you've got available through your Ovid subscription. We will Get to know the Ovid platform, the workflow, how to get around, how to, how to do what you want to do, ultimately how to get to those really relevant results um, that you've been looking for to get the full text. And we'll do that in this week's session, this intro session, using some fairly simple scenarios. Finding citation, that's the search mode that's best used for finding you know, one thing. Maybe you want to find a single article, that's what you do. And then there's basic search, and this is a great way to find lots of things but it's really easy. It's uh, built on natural language searching. So if, you're, if you can use Google, you're ready to start using Ovid in basic search. Next week, we'll go into the real deep dive stuff that you would use for, say, systematic reviews. But today, we're going to get familiar with the Ovid platform via these two rather simple ways to search. Now, when we do search, even using basic search, um, sometimes we can find a whole lot more records than we will ever have time to look at. Uh, a, a database like Medline, with its over 30 million records, PsycInfo, more focused database, it's not that big, but it's still millions of records in size. Finding too many hits, much more common problem than not enough. So we've got limits to take a big result set and narrow it down to just those things you want to focus on. Like, all right, maybe I only want human studies. Maybe I only want publications from the last four or five years. Maybe I only want publications in languages that I can read. That would make sense, right? And there are many other limits like age groups and gender and, and, uh, and lots of other things. And I'll show you how to do that. You take a limit uh, or multiple limits and take a huge result set and make it manageable. Also, sometimes we might want to get results out of Ovid. And there are easy ways to do that. We can print them out, we can email them, and we can export them to various output sources, Word, PDF, plain text, lots of ways to get things out of Ovid. And since March 31st of this year, uh, we've got some new functionality, three new buttons added to the search history, and they are for sharing. That makes it very easy to share what you just did in Ovid. If you ran a, a search, and it might have been after next week's advanced session, uh, it could be a very advanced search where you uh, are, are doing some real deep dive searching. And if you wanted to share that whole search strategy with someone, you could do it with a, a click of a button and send your colleague a link one click on that link and they would fully recreate what you just did in Ovid. So search share, I'll want to show you that as well. Getting to full text, if you find something of interest, uh, uh, Michael might, might help us out there in, in talking about processes for you getting to full text. Uh, and then briefly at the very end of this session, we'll, we'll take our first peek possibly at the more advanced search modes that we will focus in on next session, in the advanced session. Um, also, um, briefly take a peek at looking across multiple databases. All right, um, and the preview of the advanced session time permitting, but uh, that's where we will go deep in our advanced sessions on searching multiple databases using control vocabulary like subject heading and uh, putting together something that would be appropriate for systematic review. That's what we'll handle, go deeply into next week. But this week, we're gonna get familiar with the Ovid platform and the resources you've got available to you through that Ovid platform. So first of all, how would you connect to Ovid? I'm going to, at this point, stop sharing, hand it over to Michael. He'll uh, talk a little bit about, and maybe show, how you would get into Ovid Resources. 
Thank you, Glenn. Can everybody see the, uh, the St. Michael's website right now? Your screen, yes. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to talk about how you can get to the Ovid databases, whether you're coming from St. Michael's, St. Joseph's, or Providence. So if you're coming from St. Michael's, you're probably familiar with our library homepage. Um, so you can see all the uh, search bar at the top, as well as our hours. But if you come down to this section, find, that's where you can find databases. And if you click databases, you'll find a list of all of the databases that are available to you um, at uh, St. Michael's Hospital. And today, Glenn's going to be talking about the Ovid ones, which we have separate links for, but they all go to the same platform. So we're going to be talking about Psych Info, which is down at the bottom here. Uh, we're going to touch on Medline, which is in the middle here. And then we're also going to talk about EVM uh, reviews. And then there's also Cochrane up here as well. So if you click to them, you will get redirected to the database on the Ovid platform with the resource already selected. So if you click the link for EVM reviews, you get to the Ovid platform with EBM reviews as your resource selected. Same with Psych Info and Medline, as well as EBM reviews. So that's how you can get to it um, from uh, the website at St. Michael's. If you're coming from St. Joseph's, you're going to go to the St. Jo St. Joseph's homepage, which looks a little bit different, but this is the website that serves uh, library patrons at St. Joseph's. And uh, if you're looking for the Ovid databases that we're going to be talking about today, you're going to go into the resource tab and hit databases. And just like St. Mike's, there's a list of them here. Um, and you can see some of the ones that we're going to be talking about today, such as EVM reviews, uh, Medline, and Psych Info down at the bottom here. So again, they're all taking you to the Ovid platform with the resource that you selected. So this was the EVM reviews. Uh, this is the Medline, and this is Psych Info. So again, Ovid platform, which Glenn's going to go into more depth about, but it has the resource that you're looking for already pre-selected for you. And then just one more time, if you're coming from Providence, you're going to come from the Providence uh, Library website. Um, and just like the other uh, websites, you're going to go under Find, and then there's the databases there. And again, this is a list of the databases here. So again, um, we have Medline here, and um, we have EBM reviews and Cochrane. Oh, we have it for Cochrane all EBM reviews there. And unfortunately for uh, library patrons at Providence, they do not have access to Psych Info, uh, but they have access to the other da Ovid databases. And again, if so, based on the one that you choose, you'll get redirected to the Ovid platform with that resource already pre-selected for you so that you can start doing your searches. Um, and Glenn's gonna be uh, talking a little bit more about how we can do more effective searching on these platforms. So I'll hand it over back to Glenn to uh, continue on his presentation, but that's how you can connect to Ovid from the three library websites. Okay, thank you, Michael. Let me share again. Okay. Okay, let me let me talk briefly about the resources you've got available to you through your Ovid subscription. First of all, there's Medline. If you've been using PubMed, this is the, this is what you've been searching in PubMed. It is uh, it's the Medline database, which is indexing articles. It's a bibliographic database. So it's indexing uh, published articles from well over five thousand journals uh, from all around the world. Medline has it's a global database, but probably uh, uh, something of a slight uh, North American overrepresentation, but it's still covering journals from all around the world. Uh, something that's gonna become a big part of our discussion next in the, uh, in the advanced session will be the use of medical subject headings. These are important because they give us a very powerful way to search. It will be the core of our advanced searching in the advanced search uh, session. It helps us um, be confident that we haven't missed anything. And it kind of frees us up from having to think of every possible way an author could refer to a concept. This allows us to search using standard terms for concepts. But I'm not going to go too deep into this this week. I just want to start to introduce it. It'll be a big part of the advanced session. Okay, produced by National Library of Medicine. Quick peek at just a part of the Ovid Medline record. Up above this would be things like titles and abstracts and author names, but there is a section here called subject headings, and this is just your first look at it. These are standard terms that have been pulled from a list of about 28,000 terms to describe in great detail what this publication was about. 
to the core of our searching next week. Okay. Like info. So for uh, maybe not all of, of you, but uh, for a lot of you, you'll also have access to Psych Info. This, of course, uh, is a, a bit more focused database, though, whereas Medline covered over 30 million records, Psych Info uh, over 5 million, which is a pretty huge database given its focus here on behavioral sciences and mental health. It's reaching into well over 2,000 journals. If you needed a, a, a view whether a journal is covered, they do publish their coverage list. And there's a link to that in this slide deck if you if you um, Most of these are peer reviewed. Um, uh, a lot of them are, uh, the majority of them have uh, abstracts and keywords and titles in English. Uh, most of the database is made up of journal articles, some book chapters, some dissertations, and it too has a control vocabulary. So much like Medline had those standard MeSH terms, 28,000 or so, um, this database has its own vocabulary, but it's more specialized, just in things having to do with behavioral and science and mental health. So it's a smaller, more focused uh, list of terms, about 8,400. This too will become part of our advanced searching uh, in the next session. And it too lists its subject heading in the record. Okay, and then I do want to spend a bit of time just giving you an overview of this collection of databases that we call evidence-based medicine reviews. They come from various sources. Uh, some of the most frequently used ones do come from Cochrane, the Cochrane Collaboration, including their database of systematic reviews, clinical answers, and their uh, register of control trial. But there's also a couple of others uh, that you might be interested in. The ACP Journal Club, American College of Physicians, they publish uh, a uh, a collection of kind of journal club type discussions. So like a typical journal club, they would pick a recent publication from uh, a, an important journal that is of, of, of current relevance in clinical medicine and do a deep dive discussion, not just summarizing it, but as one would do in a, in a journal club, uh, a discussion of the strengths and weaknesses and uh, talking about where authors' conclusions are strongly supported by evidence and maybe where they are not, like this young person typical journal club discussion, and you could read the full text. This is a full text journal. All of that uh, comes with it, full publication comes with it. So Medline and PsycInfo, they will point you to journal uh, articles, uh, which then you would need to get the full text score. But this and a couple of other, your other journals are full text, they come with it. The Cochrane Database of Systematic Reviews, it's full text. You get the systematic reviews with that. Okay. I grabbed the screenshot last night, not sure when you will be watching this recording, but I did want to point out a few things. Some of these databases are updated monthly or bi-monthly. Others are much more frequent, like the uh, database of systematic reviews. And you'll notice a few dates here that are lagging a bit. These four at the bottom, they're no longer updated. So searching these would just sort of be for historical purposes. Top four, they are current. So even though the date might go back a month or two, some, they're not all uh, updated. To, Weekly or monthly, some of them are bi-monthly. Okay, so I'm going to just talk, uh, give a, a couple minutes to those that are most frequently used. So of this set, uh, one that's very popular is the Cochrane Database of Systematic So the Cochrane Collaboration, made up of various expert groups, they have taken on important topics in clinical medicine. Currently, there's over 8,700 of these systematic reviews available to you, and you've got them available in full text. This database is updated monthly. That 8,700 represents full systematic reviews. There are also systematic reviews that you could uh, search for in based on these various classes. A protocol, well, this is just a plan for an upcoming review. So you might want to see, hey, is anybody working on a, a review on this topic? You could search for a protocol. Uh, if you just wanted to limit to new reviews, maybe you did a search in Cochrane uh, a year ago and just want to see if there's anything new, you can limit by that. Have, have there been any updates to reviews that you read in the past? So these are limits that would allow you to, to uh, focus in on the subtype of systematic review. Now, a systematic review is great uh, when you need to kind of see what, what, what do we know about, about a given topic? Let me go back a slide. What do we know about a given topic? Looking at the systematic review. Someone's done a deep dive. These might be 100 pages, 200 pages long, uh, and not only tell you kind of uh, the current state of knowledge on that topic, but also what do we know, what support is strongly by the evidence, and, and, and where do we not have so much evidence. 
for those of you who have time to read these systematic reviews, that's just great. But we know that in a, in a busy working clinical setting, you don't always have time to look at a 100 page systematic review. So another database available via this evidence-based medicine review suite is Talking Clinical Answers. Talking Collaboration also produces this, but these aren't 100 page deep dives. These are very short, direct answers to very specific questions of clinical relevance. They will typically be organized in a PICO type question format, very useful in a clinical setting. At the moment, there's about 3,400 of these records. They get added quickly because, again, they can be rather short answers. Um, and, uh, and I'll want you to have a peek at those when we get into the live system. Uh, and the ACP Journal Club, this is that um, American College of Physicians. Various groups take on uh, a recent publication and do a deep discussion and analysis, critical analysis of that recent publication, as one would do in a journal club. And you've got full text access to it. Cochrane Control, uh, the Cochrane Central Register of Control Trials, it's a database that reaches into Medline, and you've already got Medline, but this also reaches into Embase and a few other sources. And it pulls together all of those records from Medline, Embase, and a few other sources that meet their criteria of what of being controlled clinical trials. Not just that they're controlled clinical trials, but if you look about four bullet points down, that they've met certain quality criteria. So it's a selective uh, literature scan on this sort of subtype of publication. And uh, you're welcome to search this as well, part of your subscription. The other four databases, I've got information about them. These are the ones that have not been updated for years, some many years, 2012. They are, you can still search them. They're still part of your subscription, but they are no longer being updated. All right, so let me get in and do a live demo. Remember, this introductory session is going to be, get you familiar with the Ovid platform. Uh, I need an ID and password to log in because I'm outside of your network and I'm using my training account here. So my list of resources is just like ridiculously long. It's just insane. Uh, don't you worry about that. Uh, using the uh, methods that Michael showed you earlier, you'll be able to get into your Medline. Uh, I'm going to get into Audit and start to show you around. Let me zoom in a bit, make this a little bit bigger and more if you need. All right, a couple of important links to point out in this top panel. One very important one is the help file. Okay, I'm going to click on that. It opens a new window, and you'll see that uh, there's all kinds of information here. If there are little images, as you saw when I scrolled over it, it's big, so in fact, some of these images are tiny. They're still useful if you scroll over them. Here's the challenge with this help file. It's so rich, so full of information. All these sections have subsections. There's just tons of information here. Uh, the challenge is there's so much information, finding things can be difficult. But let me, let me point out a couple of things. There's a search box at the top. This search box will find things in the current section you're in. So that's fine, but often just which section should I be in is the, is the question. Well, for that, there's a search function on the left side. Let me click on this. In the advanced session that's going to come, we're going to talk a little bit about Ovid's command line syntax. That's where we can do things like truncation and wildcards and adjacency searching, words that are near each other, all kinds of tricks we can do with command line searching. That'll be part of the advanced Ovid session. But what if I needed documentation on that? I would come to this search function on the left, go to the search box here on the left, command line syntax, search for that, and then this would show me the most relevant section to go to. Here are all of the command line syntax which I'll be talking about somewhat next week. Every bit of it is documented in great detail. All right, challenges, how would I have ever found it? Well, use the search function. Okay, so that's the help file, really great place to go when you need answers on the Ovid platform. Maybe a somewhat friendlier place to go is support and training. This link's always been in Ovid. If you've used Ovid a few years back, yes, it would have been there. But in recent months, it's 
has been pointing people to a much friendlier, better organized site. And where I would recommend the, you, the new user to go would be start by clicking on this browse all videos at the, the top of the list on the left side. What's nice about this is, in addition to say this current recording and, and a recording that we're gonna make for the advanced searching session, um, there are a ton of other recordings. Intro to Ovid, about 40 minutes long, kind of similar to what we'll cover today. But what you might find more useful if you're watching this recording, after getting that initial introduction, if you just need a little bit of a reminder, now what, what was fine citation? How is that different from basic search? Rather than having to relearn these things by watching a, an hour long recording or a 40 minute recording, why not look at, uh, at very specific recordings for a minute and a half, three minutes, and, uh, and learn what you need as you need it uh, from there. Okay, there's also, resource specific tutorials. So there should be things on um, EBMR, your evidence-based medicine reviews, those Cochrane things, there's Medline, there should be Psych and Coco as well. Okay, so I'll browse all videos on this site that I got to by clicking support and training. So there's plenty of help for you here in this top bar. All right, let's look at the rest of the other platform and then we'll start doing some searching. That's how we'll really get to know our way around. Search history, currently empty. Uh, you can minimize it if you need to save some space. I'll just keep it open for now. And then down below is our main search area. One of the great and powerful things about Ovid is that we can search and we can enter questions in many different formats. We've got all these search modes. That's one of the powerful features of Ovid. It's also one of the challenges to new users, all right? This isn't Google, it's not even uh, PubMed. Now PubMed, if you go deep into the advanced features, it has a lot of choices too. But for most PubMed users, you know, it's great because it's so friendly. There's just a text box and a, and a search button. Well, in Ovid, you've got a lot of choices. And we're gonna go over the main choices this session and the next. We'll go over the simplest of those choices right now. And that would be find citation. So suppose, just imagine, um, there was an article that you remember if you know something very specific about it, like the DOI, the Digital Object Identifier, if somebody gave you that, well, then you can just enter it directly, go straight to that article. But more frequently, people remember a few things. Like there was this article about COVID and it was published in the journal uh, Circulation. And uh, it was published in uh, 2021. And if I knew the author name, I'd put it in. And if I don't, well, then, the more information I can give, the more focused, narrowed down uh, result that I'll get. Here, I just remember a few things. So I'll click search and I'll probably get a fairly you know, large number. I got 78 hits. Uh, so then I could start looking through them. Had I you know, known an author name, I could have added that. And instead of 78, I'd probably get you know, that one or two hits. So this is all about finding one thing, one article, uh, a specific thing, that would be fine citation. And the more information you know about that article, the more likely you'll have a very limited focus result set. All right, the results they display below and I can start browsing through them to try to jar my memory as to, is that it, is that it? Uh, and we'll take a closer look at particular uh, results as they display. But I'm gonna take a closer look. We'll come down here and look at this lower portion uh, after I do my next search. So this first pass was just simple scenario. I'm looking for one thing, find citation, probably the best way to go, and give as much information as you need to, to narrow your results up down. All of the other search modes in Ovid are for finding many things. And of those, the simplest one to use would be basic search. All right, let me just clean house a bit. I'm gonna get rid of that first search, but now I'm in basic search. Basic search is, not the kind of thing you would use if you were going to write a systematic review and tell everyone how you arrived at your results. But it's an awfully great place to just get going uh, in a real easy, easy fashion. And should you not have the time to become a real Ovid search expert, you could still come into Ovid, be searching Medline and PsycInfo and the Cochrane databases. Uh, in fact, you could do it all at the same time. You don't have to, one at a time is a great way to search, but also I can click on change and I can pick any combination of those databases. We're gonna do multi-database searching uh, next week, maybe in fact at the end of this session. But uh, I'm gonna go to basic search because this is just an awfully easy, friendly way. 
get going. So suppose I'm interested in uh, drug treatments for Alzheimer's. Now, with traditional, I'll go ahead and click on search. With traditional database searching, I would have to think, well, what are the perfect search terms? Are there particular database fields in which I should look for these terms? Uh, these, are the, I've got multiple concepts here. How shall I combine them with Boolean operators like and and or and not, the logical combination? Do I need to group certain terms together in parentheses? That would be traditional database searching, and that's what we'll do in the more advanced ways of search. But basic search is meant to be natural language search. Much like Google, I should be able to type this in in Google and find a lot of stuff on drug treatments. Well, that works in Office also. And if we look here for the results display, on the left side, I see drug treatments for Alzheimer's. That's my original query. So did it look for those exact words? Well, it looked for those words, but it looked for other things as well, much like we'd expect of Google. Yes, it looked for the word drug, but also drugs and medication and medicine. So it's doing this synonym expansion behind the scenes. I didn't have to think of all these things. It did it for me. I said treatment, so it looked for that, but also treatment and all of these synonyms. And I simply said Alzheimer's and it looked for all of these ways that you might see that described in the literature. All right, so a search engine like Google, of course it's doing this on the back end, but it's not telling you what it did, but all of it is telling you what it did. So that's rather friendly and convenient. The other Google-like feature of basic search in Ovid is it's then going to deliver me my results ranked by this one to five star relevant ranking. Five stars means that all of my major concepts in my original query are present. Now at the, at the bottom end of all my results, how many did I get? 8,660. At the very bottom, okay, there might be some that aren't five stars and that don't have all of the concepts, but they have some, maybe it's uh, treatment for Alzheimer's, but not drugs, maybe it's some other kind, of, some other kind of therapy. But five stars, they should have all concepts. Okay, um, 8,660, we'll come back to the results in just a second. But I'll tell you what, we don't have time to look at 8,660. So I would be greatly helped at this point by applying some limits. The limits are here underneath the text box where I entered my query. Sometimes it might be minimized. You might, it's easy to miss if it's minimized. Okay. In this blue background, I see some of the limits. And ideally, these should be the limits that, that, that you and your colleagues use most frequently. If, if your library staff wanted to get in touch with uh, our support team, they could change the, defa the default speed. But these are some of the limits. If I wanted to see all the limits, all the ways by which I could take my big results that narrow down, well, then I could click on additional limits. We don't show them all by default because there's so many of them. Take them. But there are various sorts. Some of them are these checkbox types. They're just kind of yes, no. So suppose I want uh, human studies, okay? And I only want, how about uh, recent things? How about 2019 to uh, very recent? And then we have these pick lists down below. What if specifically I wanted just like early onset Alzheimer's drugs? Uh, well, then I could pick age groups that were appropriate. If I don't read every language on earth, I could use my control key. And using your control key, you can pick multiple values. See, I'll go into this And other things, publication types. Do I only want journal articles? Do I only want clinical trials of certain phases? All kinds of ways to take a huge result set and narrow it down to something much more. So now that I've picked some limits, now I'll click on this limit a search button. And instead of 8,660, I have a much more focused, and relevant 1,145. These are going to deal with human studies published in English or French and published very recently, 2019 to current. Okay, so with a database of over 30 million records like Ovid, or sorry, like Medline, um, I think limits make perfect sense. So now we'll take uh, another look at our actual results. What initially displays here is meant to be enough for me to kind of scroll through the list and decide, okay, that am I choosing that or that or that. If I needed a bit more information, articles with abstracts, we'll have a link where I can click abstract and I'll see that. Or if I really wanted more information, the full Medline record, well, then I could click on the record. Here's the full Medline record. 
hospitals there, the, the journal sources there, the author names are here. Notice they're hyperlinks. All right. So if uh, X Lee uh, is this first author here, I thought, wow, this is an interesting paper. What else has this first author published? I could click on this and I would get a new result set, everything by this author in this database. Uh, and also, subject headings. This will be, as I've mentioned a few times at the beginning, this will be a huge part of the advanced Ovid searching session. Really making good use of these. But they're all listed here. And keep in mind, they are hyperlinks too. So sometimes even advanced searchers will use basic search as a kind of discovery step. Aha, so there's a subject heading for Alzheimer's disease and a subheading for drug therapy. Perfect. One click and you have a new result set as though you had done this kind of formal subject heading search. Okay, but we'll talk all about subject headings next week. And then there's more here, the abstract is here. This is what a complete Medline record looks like. Back to the search results. Um, so that's what we mean by complete reference. That's not the same as the full text article. In some cases, you might see a link out that says full text. This is because it could be a journal that's just uh, open access and they make their full text available. Uh, it could be a journal that's not generally open access, but maybe it's after their uh, embargo period, so they're making things available. Uh, in other cases, you might uh, see a, a link with a PDF, and in, and in many cases, you might see something that doesn't have a link. So let me just ask. Michael, um, if you want to unmute for a second, uh, is there, so suppose uh, someone finds something of interest here, um, would you have suggestions for them as to how to get to full text? Do you have a process in place with a request for you? You'd like to add about that, Michael? Yeah, absolutely. We do use a link resolver. So if uh, you get to an article that has full text, you'll see a full, uh, an SMH icon um, and you can connect to the full text. And if we don't have access to the full text, you can always use our interlibrary loan service and our uh, interlibrary loan technician can get a copy of that as well. Perfect. Thanks, Michael. Yeah, and, and it's great to know that you've got that link there. Again, I'm outside your network, so the training account I'm using doesn't look exactly like yours, but it'll be it's great to know you've got that that uh, that link there for you working through your link resolver. All right, thanks for that. Okay, so uh, that's a bit about how these results display. Now let me talk about a few other things we could do with results because searching, limiting, getting to full text that's probably the main reason why we're we're doing this at all. Uh, but we might want to do more than just get to full text. Suppose I want to make a list of some of the stuff that I found print out a list of that, or, or email it, or export it. Well, for that, we've got these functions that are at the top of the results display. And also, at the bottom, as you might be working from top to bottom on your list. As you're working, you might check things. Oh, I like that one, and that one, and that one. Um, I could also save a bit of time. I could say, oh, I'm interested in 1 through 36. So I wouldn't have to check all 36. I can do a range. And then I would say, let's print out that list of results 1 through 36. Print. I can decide. Do I want to print out a simple citation, include the abstract, include the subject headings, include the complete reference, the full record of every one of these 36 records. Or I could literally pick and choose which fields I want to print. So I have complete control over what's being printed. I could also say, you know what, print this out in a standard citation style. Maybe I want this in uh, AMA style. Select that citation style, print preview, and it's ready to go. And up the style. All right. Email works in a similar fashion. Fields do I want to print out? Do I want a citation style? The difference here is, of course, I would have to put my email recipient's address. And then I can email these to that person, those particular 36 results that I select. And then export. I could move these out of Ovid and put it into things like Word or PDF or plain text or Excel. Uh, if you're building a bibliography using things like EndNote, post site Reference Manager, RefWorks, you can export in those things. And RIS and XML, sometimes you export those to import into other things. Lots of ways to get things out of Ovid. All right, print email, export, and it'll work on whatever you select, either by checking boxes or putting in a range. And those functions are at the top of the results and bottom of the results. Now, there are other ways to share information other than, say, using this email function or exporting it 
and then attaching it to an email, you know, sending it that way. These buttons have been here, these functions have been here forever, <clears throat> but it's only since March 31st of this year that these three buttons have been added. Let me show you what they do. If I wanted to share, now, this is only two steps long, all right? Not that complicated. And I could literally tell a colleague, oh, I did these two steps. I just enter those two steps and fully recreate what I just did. But imagine if you would, maybe I spent the whole day putting together a really complex search strategy and it's many steps long. They, I wouldn't want to tell my colleague what I did and, and, and force them to enter 50 steps or however many I just did. No, I'd like to make it very easy for them. And with these buttons, I can. Let me click on email all search history. It will ask me to whom do I want to send email. My name. Okay, uh, that's my email address. Uh, optionally, I can put in my email because ultimately this thing's going to be sent from Ovid, not from me. So this is would be my way of letting the recipient know who sent it. And then a subject. So I'll call this alt drugs. And optionally I can get a little message like, hey, here's my search strategy, click and, and you'll see what I did. Then email. So that should arrive in my inbox in just, just a second. Um, when it comes, we'll have a peek at it. In the meantime, let me show you and I'll there it is, Alt Drugs. Now, what came in this email? There's a link to run the search. If I click on that link, it would open up Ovid and run those two steps. If it were 100 steps, it would run the 100 steps. It would run the whole thing. Also, is a description of what I did. Maybe I just want to see what someone did. I don't need to fully recreate. Down below, it looks kind of like the same stuff up, up above. It is these two steps, but it's in a format. It could be copied and pasted into another tool that's of use in advanced searching. We'll talk about that next week. And then finally, this link at the bottom has the same function as the link at the top. It's just some people are, are a bit nervous about clicking on links that, they, that aren't fully resolved. Here you could easily see, okay, from, from Ovid.com. So, so all of that comes, it took me a couple of clicks. One click here and a click to send it. And all of a sudden, my colleague there was given a way to, with a single click, fully recreate what I had just done. So it's a great way to share your searches. Now, sometimes you just might want to uh, use your own email. Well, you can do that. Copy search history link. Okay, been copied. Well, what did I do? I'll show you. If I paste, if I just copy here into Notepad, you'll see it just copied this URL. A persistent URL, I could share this with anyone. I could even, in fact, post it on a website. What if you wanted to set up a search for uh, most you know, recent publications by people affiliated with uh, St. Michael's Hospital? Yeah, you could set up that search strategy. Post a link on your website, one click, boom. Everybody's looking at that. It just runs in Ovid and you've got it. All right, so this link, you can send it, you can post it somewhere and it would fully recreate your search strategy. And then sometimes people just don't need to recreate what you did, they just want to know what you did. Search history details, what did that copy? Well, just a description of what I did. It told me what database or databases I was in and the steps and how many people. Well, that has made sharing in Ovid so much easier than it used to be. All right, so we have already seen a whole lot of the Ovid platform what we can do. We ran a very simple, basic search, Google-like. Think Google-like natural language. I don't need to know traditional database searches. I could have been in one database. I could have been in Medline and PsycInfo uh, and Cochrane, and, uh, and we could have done our searching that way as well. Let me show you. Now, again, my list of databases is, is ridiculously long. If I click on this change, suppose I don't want to run this in, and let's just Let's just simplify this. I'll get rid of it. Uh, let's just do that initial. Actually, you know what? I want to start to show you some of the more traditional ways of searching. And we will spend uh, the whole advanced session in advanced search. 
and in search fields. Let me just give you a, an example of a search field. So this will be your first look at more traditional searching. Basic search, that was Google-like. Now we're doing traditional searching where I specify one or more database fields. The default here is to search whatever I enter in the text box in all of the database fields. But what if I want to be more specific? And I do want to find all publications in Medline written by people affiliated with a certain institution. Select the institution field. Now instead of all fields, I'm just searching institution. I could pick institution and abstract. I could pick any combination of these, but I'm just going to go institution. And then I'm going to say, how about uh, St. Michael's? And using Boolean logic here, Toronto. If I said or, then we'd find everything where St. Michael's is listed as author affiliation. One of the authors is, was from there. Or Toronto was from there. Uh, or, or they were from Toronto. That would be way broader than I want. I want them to be from St. Michael's and from Toronto. All right? Because I suspect there's St. Michael's also. A few other things I want to point out before I run this. We will talk much more about this in the advanced session. But this is a good place to introduce the idea of obvious command line syntax. I know, because I've tried this search, that uh, in Medline and other databases, you know, there can be variations in how things are entered. Suppose someone didn't use the apostrophe in St. Michael. Um, one way for me to find things with or without apostrophe would be to replace those last couple characters with either the dollar sign or the asterisk. That's a truncation symbol. It means after this root word, anything's okay. So with apostrophe, without, and that would be okay. okay. And as long as you've got enough of a root, it's probably not going to be confusing. So I'm going to go St. Michael or St. Michael's or St. Michael's apostrophe S and Toronto. And let me click on search. Look at this. 16,760 results. Let's open up some of these complete references uh, and see what we found. St. Michael's Hospital, Toronto. Um, we'll just look at a couple of these. But the institution field, it should list. Um, list author affiliation along with author name. Notice that the highlighting can sometimes make you think that it didn't look for all of those criteria. Here's St. Michael's Hospital, Toronto. So what I asked for is there, St. Michael's and Toronto. But here, in this case, it's just lighting up Toronto. That's okay. The highlighting is broader than the search. The search itself really is looking for what I asked for. So that's a quick look at using a more traditional way to search by defining a field and, and um, giving the search criteria. And in this case, I used and in my query because both of these things needed to be true. All right, let me clean house here a bit. We'll get rid of step one. We're just at the St. Michael's and Toronto. Now, suppose I wanted to see, um, well, how about Psych Info? Anything in Psych Info that wasn't in uh, Medline? Well, here's what I would do. Above where my current database is listed, so currently I am in Medline, and all these bits and pieces of Medline make up everything you would find in PubMed. So if you're accustomed to searching PubMed for your Medline info, we get a daily feed from the National Library of Medicine every day. You get updates from them, and anything you would find there, you should find here. But what you can't do in PubMed is, I could now change databases on this change link, my whole list of menu choices of databases, and again, mine is long, but yours would have your database, Medline and PsycInfo and uh, the EBMR. Often databases. So I'm going to get into Medline and Psych Info, and then I would say, you know what? Now rerun what I did, but in this two database environment. So now I've got St. Michael's in Toronto, and I've got hits from Medline, and I've got hits from Psych Info. Okay? Now, these are two big databases, and maybe I want to uh, have a look at uh, not thousands and thousands, let's limit it. Let's just look at maybe the last, uh, how about What's being published last two years? 2020 to current. I'm going to apply that limit 
and instead of 17,000, we're down to 3,751. I'm not surprised that there are a lot more of them in Medline than PsycInfo. Medline's a bigger database, and it's broader. It's not focused just on um, mental health and, and behavioral sciences. No, it's more clinical medicine. But you know what? There might be stuff that PsycInfo is capturing that Medline is not. What's really great about you folks having multiple databases available in a single platform is I can do that reach. I can reach beyond just a single database at a time. I can search, we just searched both of these databases at once. Instead of searching Medline and PsycInfo, I could have searched Medline, PsycInfo, talking database, systematic. I could search all of your things at once. But in this intro course, uh, I did want to just cover a couple. And the next thing I'd like to show, and another advantage of having multiple databases on the same platform is I can remove duplicates, all right? Now, even though Medline and PsycInfo, they have uh, different areas of focus, I wouldn't be surprised if there is some duplication. So those top journals might be talking about, you know, depression and things like that, and might be covered in both Medline and PsycInfo. Well, I can click deduplicate. And uh, I wouldn't worry about uh, field preferences here on the left, really. That's not going to have a huge impact on your results, uh, not at all for, this, for these two databases. But we can look at database preferences. This is saying, if there's a duplicate, keep the one at number one, lose the one at number two. If you didn't like that, you could, you could swap the order. If it doesn't matter, just leave it as is. I'm going to leave this, uh, but you could change it if you want. And I'm just going to click uh, Continue. And instead of 3,751 results, we're going to have fewer because I wouldn't be surprised if indeed there were some duplication between PsycInfo and Medline. And I sure don't need to waste any time looking at the same results twice. So what did we get here? There were a few duplicates, but not that many. Um, OK. If they were all duplicates, well, then you'd think, well, why do I need to search two databases? But the fact is, they, they aren't. There's a whole lot of content you know, that you might find in one database, but not, not the other. So, uh, so this is a great way to really expand your reach using a, a Ovid to, to search multiple databases and then remove duplicates. Now, one of the nice things here is, um, and people do this occasionally, if I go to the More menu, I could say Review Duplicates. If you're like mm, not sure if you trust Ovid, um, did it did it really get rid of something it should have kept? Well, you could you can come here and it'll put side by side. Here's the one from PsycInfo. Here's the record from uh, Medline. In my preferences, I said keep the one from PsycInfo, lose the one from Medline. Uh, so that's why this one was kept and this one was lost. But we could look. Okay, um, you know, capitalization here, but it's the same. It's the same one. And you could compare and you could double check Ovid's deduplication. So it's there. Uh, if people do want to check, you go to the more menu. And, uh, click it. Okay. So in today's session, I did want to show you uh, a few things. I'm going to come back and uh, take a peek at the this session's agenda, and then we'll take a, an advanced look at what's coming in the advanced session. But um, I do believe we got to connect to Ovid, went through the resources available on Ovid, did some simple find citation and basic search, the Google-like search. We applied limits to narrow down our searches, our results to a manageable number and those that we want to look at. We got results out of Ovid by printing, emailing, and exporting. Those new search sharing options made it super easy to just send a colleague a link that would fully recreate our whole search strategy. Now again, Maybe not that impressive today when our whole search strategy was like two steps long. But some of these searches, if you've seen systematic reviews, they can be very long, and that would be a huge time saver. Uh, getting to full text, Michael helped out with that. Uh, we had a first look at, at other search modes, especially search fields. Uh, and we just searched across multiple databases and removed. So uh, that's really what I wanted to cover today. And I'm going to give you a preview of the advanced sessions. And here's what we're going to cover in that one. These databases, Embase, and, sorry, Medline and PsycInfo, they are indexed databases. They have those 
subject headings, those standard terms that the author didn't produce or didn't provide, the publisher didn't provide, no, the database producer itself, they provided these subject headings. Describe what that publication is about. Very powerful way to search. That's what we're going to focus in on steps in the advanced session. We're going to browse the tree for Medlon. We're going to browse the thesaurus for PsycInfo. Uh, and put together a search across multiple databases that would be appropriate publishing in a systematic review so that someone could see exactly what you did and reproduce it themselves if they wanted to. Uh, we're going to save searches. We're going to talk about special Ovid filters. Um, particularly built for Medline. Uh, saving searches and setting up, say, auto alerts, that would be a way to save a search strategy in Ovid and just tell Ovid, you know what, every week, month, whatever's appropriate, run this search and just send me the latest update. And finally, command line searches. I showed you that section of the help file where it's all documented. And we did a little bit of that, didn't we? We used the truncation symbol for St. Mike Holmes to avoid any problem with the apostrophe S. Um, but we'll talk about more command line tricks also in the advanced session. So this would take you, so hopefully today you're familiar with getting to Ovid, kinds of resources you've got available to you there, and how to navigate uh, the workflow, the layout of Ovid, also where to get help. Uh, and then in advance, we'll go deep into the stuff you would do to um, do a query appropriate for systematic review. All right. So that's it. Let me let me hand it back to Michael. Anything you'd like to add before we wrap this up, Michael? Uh, no, thank you so much, Glenn. It was a very informative class. I know I learned a lot. All right, well, that's great. Um, if you're watching the recording, I'm sure you'd be able to reach me whenever you call, but our support lines and email should be open uh, just at any time. US and Canada number are listed there and uh, other parts of the world. But we have offices all around the world, so even if it's a crazy hour, you can try. You'll probably reach someone. Okay, so support at ovid.com or the uh, other numbers listed below. All right, so that's it. I'm going to stop sharing now. Get back to uh, Michael. Okay, great. Thank you so much. And I hope uh, everyone who's watching this recording uh, attends the advanced searching uh, class on uh, November 23rd or watch the recording of the advanced uh, searching class that will be made available through the library as well. So thank you so much.